place, you hear me talk about human emotional law, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at human emotion, it gives you an idea how we can capture that person's interest as we're creating. So tell me, what is the buyer cycle? Or seller cycle? Percolation? Information? Activities? Right? Russ, what is the time frame in something like that? For the whole thing? Yeah. For the buyer, it's six to nine months. Just if we start percolation right now, right? This is one of the things that I actually used from Russ's training to implement into my understanding of target marketing. If I get nothing out of it, what I'm looking for is to create percolation. Okay? To create that, that, that pace forward to get somebody thinking about <coughs> what is it about real estate. Because here's what's happening. You're sitting on your back porch sipping your choice of beverage, it's a Saturday, weather's great, you're getting ready to mow the grass and you can't get into the bathroom, why? Because you got five kids that are occupying the bathroom. So your choice is to go find a place around the corner or buy a new property. But how do we do that? This is where I'm starting to implement target marketing, emotional side of selling. So let me ask you a question. As you receive mail, because some of you are going to charge and make the accusation that I'm going back to old school. You're right. Because I'm going back to human, human nature. So let me ask you, as you receive a piece of mail, looks like junk mail, what do you do with it? Toss it, right? How many times have you taken a letter that is handwritten and tossed it in the garbage? Never. Unless it's somebody you hate and you can see it's from them. Then maybe. But if you see something that's handwritten, so here's the very beginning of target marketing. I make it really simple. And I'm going to walk you through the MLS and how to leverage the MLS into this information and leverage your target marketing into potential properties. So I want to also share with you, I have vast experience because I created it. I also have experiences in it. And I will share a time that I had uh, Clinton, Andy, actually do a target marketing campaign that sold a $710,000 listing for me. Created how many buyers into that open house you did? 22, I think it was. A lot of people come through the open house, yeah. Like, like 22 people came through the open house. As you apply target marketing, there's vast different applications of target marketing that you're going to want to know about. I'm not going to be able to get into them all today. This will at least give you a base on what it really is. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to buy envelopes. I'm going to simply put Rick Bentley C21 at the top. Now you might even order them and have that printed here. Never have this printed. This on your target market piece, it has to be handwritten. It has to look hand. Have your hire your neighbor's kid to do it if you don't have anybody. Have your kids do it. Because I'll typically do these in, a, in, in packs of about 100 homes, okay? So the next thing is, is as I show you how to create a full buyer printout. Some of you have seen that or saw that. As you print this out, it puts your name at the top, and I'll show you that once you print it out. It's going to give you the information, but I'm also going in 5 to 10 years. So I'm going to go 5 years and back. I'm going to pull that information of properties that sold at that time. So I'm extracting that information from the MLS so that I can target those individuals. Okay? Well, down here, here's how it prints out. It gives you this wide open space right here. This is where you're going to put your message in, whatever that message is for you. This has been very successful for me. I might have a buyer for your home. Call me. Now, do you think... If you listed a property, three fifty, four hundred thousand dollars, you can have a buyer for them. Yeah. Not only yes, hell yes. It's money in the bank. So you're actually going after these people you know who are going to have a life change that actually bought five to ten years ago, maybe further back. I really don't care because it's extremely important that there is a photo on it because as you 
get this and you open this up, the next thing that causes human nature, that's my house. As you open it and see a picture of your home, you know, holy shit, what is this? It's my house. I don't care if it's a renter or you as a seller, you're going to look. And you're going to go further because human, human nature will not allow you to go past it. So they go down and go, huh, may I have a buyer for my home. Really? Well, I'm not really thinking of selling. So here's where I'm always going to take my listing. So for instance, the one we did in, in, in um, Draper was a $710,000 home. What is my target range, do you think? What is the target price range that I'm looking for? I'd say three to four hundred. Three, four, five hundred. Look, I'm going to the seven hundred. If it's a seven hundred, I got two ninety-five here. We're just going to put a seven hundred. Oh no, this is this is going to be a five hundred to maybe six hundred because this is going to be the seven hundred. So what am I doing here? I'm casting visions, dreams, possibilities of owning this property. You can sell yours. How much equity in five to ten years is there? A lot. A lot. So here's the question I ask them. Would it make sense in order for us to leverage the equity out of your current home here into a property that's going to grow faster in value? Now somewhere along here, open house. So I'm actually going to target an open house for this very activity. Because now I'm going to put in this, I'm going to put in a call to action letter from your wonderful loan officer you work with. Here's the beauty right now. Do you suppose that with this, someone there in their 3.125 or a uh, 2.875 or 3? Holy crap. Now how much can they buy? Their leverage is thirty to forty thousand dollars more than it even was last week. So if you can go, look, if I can leverage in you into this property with the equity out of this home, let's just say it's a hundred grand, which I bet most of them are that way, plus with the low interest rate, do you suppose that you could probably keep the payment somewhere around the same? Yes. I have a clarifying question. Okay. Um, are you sending all this information to them at once, like with your listing and then their Thank copy? you. Yes, because what I'm doing is I'm folding this up to where it's the very next thing. Number one, they're going to open up. Right? So this is the number one thing they're going to see. Second thing they're going to see is the target home. It's this one. That you have listed. But yes, because I have it listed. Then I'm going to provide a lender letter that gives them the hopes and ideas they can. I'm not going to call your lender to get qualified. Most of the time, you're going to get them call calling the lender before they call you. So if you're in tune with your lender, where'd you get my information? Well, Rick Bentley. Great, let's get you in and get you qualified. It's really nice when your lender goes, hey, got you a buyer. Where'd they come from? Target marketing. Okay, so what you do is you put that in. This is going to be the last. <coughs> One, because I'm going, holding this, this, this goes in last, and I'm slipping a card in. But I'm, I'm also open house Saturday. Okay, for whatever, 10 to, 10 to, what, 2? Yes. I love that. That's, that's awesome. Now, when you're putting in sold and you're putting their house that's intriguing their interest, and you're saying the amount, you're targeting them because they're in a 500 to 600 range. Yes. Correct? Are you putting their home on there saying, I have a buyer for you? Yeah, I'm saying I have a and buyer. Then, call me. I might have a buyer for your property. Okay, and then you're going to call them and you're going to try to get them to sell their property. They may call me. Okay, awesome. So here's the other thing. So I've had six months, year down the road, somebody call me going, hey, Rick, so I didn't include, you, there's another piece of target marketing I'm not really going over with you. You can do target marketing without this piece because you're just looking in a neighborhood in your area mm -hmm. that you want to create a target market piece and get the emotional buy-in to dreams, hopes, and vision of a nicer home. Yeah. So then as you, as you put all this information either, either with this or without this, 
Now you go door knocking. And I'm going to show you how to print this out and how to capture these neighborhoods and where to actually go with it in structuring your target marketing. And that's the things you'll print out are this right here in any given area. You can also apply it to your SOI, people you've passed on. So you've been in the business a while. I have well over 300 target <coughs> marketing pieces to pass clients. And it's also another way, if it was my listing and it sold, I have 300 of those that I can adopt somebody else's buyer that bought my listing. Why would I do that? Because you guys don't keep in touch with your SOI. So I'm going to borrow them for life. So that you, they're going to know me way beyond you because of what I'm doing. Here's the beauty. When they open this up, what do you do to sell homes? Huh. They actually get to see techniques or strategies you use to get properties sold. I'm creating buyers. And right now, this is a way for you to improve your door knocking. Because next is printing out this list. And it'll show you how to create that list to where you're going to go door knock these doors. And it sounds something like this. Knock, knock. Hi, I'm Rick Bentley. I mailed you a piece the other day. Just wonder if you folks received it. Here's the deal. Half the time they're saying no. Why? Because the kid got it. They don't want to move. Or the husband got it says, hell no, I'm not letting the wife see that. I don't want to spend more money. They don't know. So a lot of the times, I have to just go to it as if it's a cold door. So when you do come across it, this is what I'm proposing. I got a property up around the corner that actually, if I could leverage into a home and keep your payment somewhere around the same, would it make sense for us to do that and have a property that'll grow faster in value? So it's those kind of things you're gonna ask. Here's another one. If there was one thing you'd change about your property, what would it be? Oh, I want a bigger garage. I want a bigger master bedroom. I want more room. Why don't we leverage the equity out of this property into something that will grow faster in value? You always give a value statement. And as you do the door knocking and walk through this, this is the door knock is the second touch. Here's what I've got before. Oh, it's you, Dustin. I got your mailing. Yeah. I am very interested. I had one that says, don't mail me anymore. Take me off your list. Oh, all right. You're not interested in the great bills and that? No, I got a rate. I got an agent. It's called my wife. Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> Off the list. I've had him go, wow, did you teach my spouse this? Sure, they come to Century 21. So it's being able to implement in something to create a inventory that we don't have right now. How many people can sell their home right now? A ton. A lot. And it's about being able to get in and actually door knock and make that happen. So. You guys in the back might want to pull forward because I'm going to pull it up on the screen. You're going to want to watch the steps I go through in creating that target market piece. Come on up. I really like this, Rick, because it's, it's actually implementing what you're offering. If you're, Absolutely. Saying, if you're saying target marketing and strategy, you're actually showing them that this is what you do. Here's a way to create a buyer for their property they never would have got before. So as I'm talking to them, so what makes you different? Well, so excited you brought that up. I'm hoping to get into point leveraging before we leave today because it's the things you hear me say. <coughs> Look, I do target marketing point leveraging. Most people don't even, don't even know what that is out there. And as you see this target marketing come together now, it's a whole different ball game when you're talking about it now because it truly gets to those people who want to buy now or don't know they're wanting to buy right now. And it goes through that process the buying process. Like Russ said, sometimes it takes, what, six to nine months. So you're creating the percolation process. Huh. <coughs> wow. Never thought about it. I've had him a year down the road. Hey, I got a mailing from you. Was wondering if you could come by, talk to me about this. Yeah, absolutely. Striking. And it's really, it, when I do those pieces, it's close into my neighborhood. So I'm going to go into actually the process of how we do that. Get off my knees if you guys are okay with that. So 
I've played around with this for years, trying to figure out how to use this particular <coughs> process in creating the program for target marketing. So what I'm going to go into is absolutely first is a full, <coughs> search, with full search. So right here, and then I'm going in here, and I'm actually going to take that out and go to sold. It's vitally important you come up over here and you make sure you got advanced search. So you're going to want to make sure that you get in because we're looking for data, right? We're looking for that information that's been archived in the in the MLS for. I think as far as back as I've seen it is 1990, if I'm not mistaken. So, but I know that that's where I'm going to actually go with it. So, I might be looking at my set places I'm going to actually go to, is I'm going to pick the city in which I'm target marketing. So, I'm actually going to go into, where's city on here? Here we go. So, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to just say Sandy for, Kicks and giggles. So I'm going to go into Sandy and I'm actually going to pull it up. Okay? So for some reason, we have, oh, here we, here's why. Boom. Got to take that out. I'm going to go in here and say, let's say, say, zero, 01, zero, 01, say, 2013. Okay? I'm going to put that in. 24,606 potential target markets in Sandy alone. Vary in every single price range. Now, some of these properties have probably resold and relaunched again over and over. I really don't care. That's not what I'm looking for ultimately. What I'm looking for is actually a property with a photo on it that I can actually make a contact and present and project getting somebody in a higher priced property. So it's the information I'm looking for and how I work through it. It's, it's going to be hit and miss because I'm not going to go through every listing and go, has it been sold how many times in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years? I'm not going to do it. So I'm actually going to go in and, and, and look at the sold date because that's where they bought their new property. So... Do you do price range? No. I, well, yes. Thanks for asking that. Price range based on, look, so if we're doing a 710, what is the next target price range? Million nine hundred. Well, not if you're going up. Look, we're we're trying to push people to a listing. So, say you have a listing for five hundred, six hundred thousand. Where are you going to be at, Clint? Well, I was just going to say. I mean, that that applied all until recently. Now, if you're searching for a four hundred thousand dollar home that was sold seven years ago, correct? It's probably the same price as the home you're trying to sell and, and right it, now. So, you, you yeah, absolutely. Back even lower on price point. To, Say two hundred thousand. Without question, for four hundred fifty thousand dollar home. So yeah. yeah, we're in a little bit different a market. So I wouldn't limit your search by dollar. No, yet, spot on. We're not. I'm never going to limit that by dollar, because I'm looking for. A, when I say demographic, what does that mean? Based on demographic, you've heard me in my scripts. Look, target market is based on demographic, most likely buyer group. Correct. So I'm going from one neighborhood to the next. What's the most likely, so I'll show you on my property, actually, where I live, and let's just jump to Sandy. And we're going to go up here, we're going to view the maps. So I'm actually going to go to the map, and it's going to bounce up here. Do you want to jump to Sandy? Or at least it normally does. I think you have to you do the land. Did I take it out? Oh, don't tell me. I Okay, I guess I'm going to show you all over again. Oh, no, here we are. So, Sandy. City, Sandy, right here. Let me make sure I got that in. It's interesting, so it didn't, it did take it out for some reason. So I'm going to put in Sandy, and I'm going to go up to my map, because you're 24,606 potential. It's going to say, do you want to jump to? Yes. So it gives you the map of Sandy, which is a lot of fun because now here's my target area is outlined, right? So I'm going to go and just go from my house and show you what I've done as far as a target marketing on my property. So I'm looking for 106 South, which is right here. Yeah. 
So I'm going to work right in this general area. So my house is about 650,000. So I am, let's see, 106th. This is 13th right here, or 7th, yeah. correct? 7th mm -hmm. is 7th. Mm -hmm. So I am, 13th, right there. It's 1,000. Why am I not recognizing? That's 13th. That's 13th, isn't it? Well, 700, that's Oh, it's right here. Here we are. Okay, here's 7th. So my house actually exists right here, right on this corner. Okay, it's about a $650,000 home right now. So my target group is most likely in this general area. You take this home right here, I'm actually going to target that area. So I'm gonna come up here. Now we know it's sold properties, correct? So I'm gonna draw a line around that. Now I'm looking, I'm typically gonna go from you know, street to street to kind of keep my door knocking where I need it to be. I'm gonna bring it up, boom. Now, uh, normally I'm looking for around 100 pieces to send out. This right here, I don't know how many give it to me, it doesn't matter, I just wanna show you. So each one of these are a target marketing. So as you view the results, you're gonna come in here and go, huh, who are they? I may or may not include these because we don't have a picture. So it, it, I might look at it and just see. So I'm only going to pull a couple up here, just kind of give you an idea what this looks like. So as I go in there, I'm going to go into client full report. Okay, why am I doing that? Gives the picture in your name. Gives picture in your name. Look, it puts everything out there. Look, Rick Bent, presented by Rick Bentley. It takes away the companies that worked on it. Absolutely. And look at this dollar per square foot. Now this may or may not, this may have sold a couple times over and over. I don't really care again. This is fun information for them to look at at one time what this property sold for. So I'm looking for the photo because they're going to open this up and go, huh, wow, well, this is back in 97. Well, I know people in this area that are living there that bought way even before, I mean, in the, in the early 90s. Because I lived in this general area for about 23 years now. But what can this property now potentially sell for? 500, 450. What's the square footage? 1850, no. 350, yeah. 400, 350, 400,000 dollars, right? So as I pull up these, this information, as I hit print, here's what happens. I'm actually coming in here and I got this big blank area. So you know on that one where it shows the blank area on that printout? This is where I'm going to put my message. You may be call for a free evaluation on your property. It's a good time to sell. Interest rates are down to 2.875 right now. Call me. I may have a buyer for your property. These are the, so whatever your message is, you're thinking, well, a hundred, I got to write out a hundred of those? No. Take a blank piece of paper, write your message, put your your listing printouts in the machine, let that print that same message on every one of these. Because that's the same message, then you're stuck there all night writing out a hundred, hey, I may have a buyer for your property. So you can really get past that. So another one that I'm gonna do after that is I'm actually gonna go and pull up, remember when I said keep a agent brief? This is gonna be part of my door knocking piece. Because I'm gonna print this out, and this is where I'm gonna keep notes. Because not every door is gonna be a target market door. Remember, I'm looking for those that are actually sold five years or more. So that I can actually go in and have the conversation, are they interested in buying or, buying or selling property? Have you considered the property I mailed to you? Does it make sense to look and leverage your equity out of this home into that home, keep your payment away the, basically the same or maybe a little more. Remember, things have changed. So it's about having something to talk about. <coughs> so as I knock these doors, I'm going to put that, and I might have to go back two or three times, but I'm also inviting them if I'm doing a target point at home, open house on Saturday. Why don't you come by? And it's like Clint and Andy said, they had like 22 people <coughs> through. And what was interesting, Leah Kruger, a lot of you guys know who she is. I don't know if you guys all know who Lee Schlaker is. In that same neighborhood, if you remember right, Clint, that Leah had a property for 800 up on the next street. Lee had one for 1.2 million. They had four people go through. 
on the same day, we had 22 couples. I ended up selling that home to somebody who got a target market piece who actually contacted their family member who was a realtor with Remax and said, contact these guys on this property. I want to buy this home. But these guys knocked how many doors, Clint? Uh, I did call about 150. About 150. I mean, fantastic way to pick up a number of buyers, but it gives you a reason to be out there knocking doors and information you can leverage into it. They did the open house, had a ton of people through, and you ended up getting a lot of buyer possibilities. So you can also go in and hit, so the map report, oops, where'd that go? Rick? Yeah. So if you don't have a listing in that area, what's your what's your strategy? Can you just pull one up and say, hey, this house is for Love sale. that. Yeah, if you want to try it, yeah, absolutely. You can pull. I, I would get the okay from the agent who has it. In fact, I would probably say, hey, can I do an open house for you? And I'm going to take that property. I'm going to do a target marketing campaign. Then I'm going to knock the heck out of those doors. Now, we had a builder we did this for. The <coughs> builder was willing to give away a TV had two brand new homes side by side. We did about a 300, because we did 100 doors per agent. We had three agents doing it. They all got together, had, got together and bought a $300 TV, and they said, come for the potential drying. It's interesting how many people you have <coughs> something like that. But it's about creating value, and I'm going to absolutely get a hold of somebody and make that happen. Yes? Um, I really like that, because if you just let them know, say, hey, I'm marketing this home, do you mind if I market your home? They'd be like, why not, right? Get my, property, get my property sold. But you can, when you door knock, you can say, my team has listed a property up there here. There you go. You could, because it's sent to C21, right? My team has listed a property up here and just go about your presentation. This yeah, it, it, yeah, absolutely. If you got a property, so look, I like, if I'm doing a target market piece um, that doesn't include a listing like that, I'm gonna stick in an area I know so I can intelligently talk about the places to eat, shop, and live, school stats, different things like that. So, you know, I, if you folks, you know, if there's one thing you change about your property, what would it be? So I'm making practical application to create value and how you speak to them matters. This is just, this just really, this target marketing piece creates percolation. What does percolation mean? Starting a process. Starting a process. Percolates up inside of you, right? Well, I didn't know I wanted a new home, but now I think I do. And then you second come along, they got them thinking about it, because you let a week, about a week go by, you go knock the door, invite them to the open house. It's not an open house, you just go knock and ask. I'm, look, I'm looking for listings, market's hot right now. It's a great time to sell a home. Why? <laughs> the historic lows, 2.875. You got more buying power right now, or selling power in your property than you ever had in my 30 years of doing this. So this is a way to create an SOI also. So I keep in touch with a certain group of people in an area, let them know what the market is doing. And when they ask you what you do to sell homes, duh, because you're taking it to people who don't even know they're sellers or buyers yet. Does that make sense? So questions this far. Okay, I'm assuming you all got it. Um, so the map report is actually, I don't know why it's not showing up on here, but the map, it. huh? Uh, if you just hit the minus, it'll show the properties of the three that pulled up. Oh, got gotcha. you. Thank Ruby. Um, so these are the door, door uh, so I might take this and I might create notes if I print this out in that type of property. These are the properties because, look, this door is going to be different than this door and what you're saying. This door, hey, I mailed you a piece of information about target market and wondering if you received it. Yeah, or a lot of times, no. But still, it's giving you an opportunity to talk about what's going on. And you know, I just got a home right up over here for 650, would you be interested in leveling the equity, equity out of this home into that one? Well, maybe, why don't you come by Saturday, let's take a peek at it, where we can set up a private showing. It's all of these pieces that allow you to have great conversations with them. I've launched these, uh, target marketing campaigns for years, and I've got stuff so late in the game, it's like, holy crap, I sent that a year ago, and you're just now? I can't believe what people keep. <laughs> but it's interesting. 
um, they'll have your card still sitting there. So the other applications, like I was saying, is target marketing. If you have a past clientele, like I said, I've had tons pick it up, pull all of those out on the buyer side control. Is it time? So I message on that, hey guys, just checking on you. Is it time to evaluate your taxation on your property or are you ready to leverage into a property that will grow greater in value, interest rates? Kind of the same story but a little bit different. If it's my listing that's sold, you know, it's a different story. Hey, I'm contacting you to let you know what's going on in the neighborhood and I was sold this home. And I, I had one home I sold four times four times. I kept hijacking the the buyers, or set, which become a seller to me. And they're going, is this what you do all the time? Yeah, all the time. Yes? Explain to me how you hijack again. So when you sell a property, you take your buyer out, you show them a great home, you put them under contract. They're all excited, the deal's done, you're walking away, it's a nice big check in your hand. Typical agent forgets about their past client, they never call them. They never do anything with them. They forget who you are because you're not following up with your SOI. So I come along, I'm going to adopt them because I'm giving them this and then I'm going to go knock their door. But I'm saying, hey, well this is how I market and sell properties. Would it make sense for us to get together? Hell yeah. That other person didn't do anything. and I'm, In fact, I'm not sure who they were. And it's interesting how much that goes on. We don't keep in touch with our past clients near enough. And Rick, you actually mentioned that when you did um, transactions, you actually not only adopt the sellers, but you adopt the buyers. Like Absolutely. If you, if, when the buyer moves into the home that you just sold and you check in with them like a month later, hey, how's it going with the property? Absolutely. I know it's been sold. You know, just <coughs> Absolutely. I want to know that they're doing okay, even if I was the listing agent. And I've had agents call me, what you do? Call my seller or my buyer for. Just check in. Well, I just want to make sure everything was fine on the property. What's the problem? Not well, they're mine. It's not yours anymore. I'm not going to say that, <laughs> but it's interesting when they call you and they get all heated under the collar because they are afraid of what I do because I'm adopting that and they're buying and I'm six months from there. Hey, is everything going great? Is everything working right for you? Or I might send out a target marketing piece and I might not say anything. But whose name is in front of them? Mine. And how am I getting it? Because they're looking at a handwritten envelope, they're opening it, looking at their house and going, holy crap, this guy keeps coming at us with information. Yeah, do you know what the changes are in your neighborhood? Just wanted to let you know. They'll refer you. They'll refer you. If you know anybody who's looking for a great property right now, hey, interest rates are 2.875, is their agent doing that? Most likely not. So this is where target marketing really comes in and fills the gaps. But more importantly, when I'm presenting to somebody, I say, look, what makes me different is I've created target marketing campaigns that are based on demographics and the most likely buyer for your property. I know how to go after that information. My MLS is better than anybody's MLS. Why? Target marketing. This is something that can really change the way you approach what your business is. Here's the interesting thing, most of you won't do it because it is a lot of work. It seems to be tedious and then when you, here's what I hear, yeah, I tried it. Great. What came up? Nothing. I didn't get anything. Well, how many doors did you knock? 30. Really? 30 doors? I'll send out in series 100 doors at a time. Lou Tran at nine months pregnant can go out and knock 100 doors a day. What's our problem? This just gives you a bigger opportunity to get in front of them for a second time. And who cares if nobody calls you right away? Like I said, I've had them a year out call me and go, hey, you sent me this. I don't remember who my agent is. Can you help us? Hell yes. I had one guy call me and goes, on, on, our, on my list of my sold properties, hey, am I in trouble? I got this information because it looks so official. Is there a problem? Is I, I said, no, I'm just checking in on you. He goes, well, I need to sell. I'm going through a divorce. Well, I can help you. Well, I listed the property a year later. So these are things you should be implementing even with your past clients because nobody else is using it. Nobody else is doing it. Look, we're the only, I'm the only one who ever teaches it because I created it. 
So when somebody says, oh yeah, I, I know what target market is all about. Really? What is it? So I'll set people up to fail because if they're not answering, it's based on demographics, most likely buyer group. Ask them that. If they can't answer that, there's a problem. Andy. Do you ever remarket? So do you, how often, your SOI, you're gonna do it six months, once a year, or however you're gonna do that. Twice a year, so, typically. Do you remarket the same, so let's say you're just doing a neighborhood where you don't necessarily have a listing, you're just trying to farm a neighborhood. Yes. Do you redo this? Absolutely. How often? Yeah. When I was actively selling like you guys, probably quarterly, it depends on how, how I wanted to dominate that particular area. Because look, you can keep going back and knocking the same doors, pretty soon they go to you. Yeah, it is. I'm here. I'm relevant. I'm, I'm doing what I need to be in your face. And they're gonna go, and I, let's just come back to where I had one go, I think I was on the third time selling the same house. Take me off your list. I have family members that's been in real estate forever and this is, that's who I'm gonna go with. Okay, great, he says, but wow, this is really cool what you do. Yeah, I know. So the, the, the thing is, is the other agents don't know how to even get in and use this data to make this happen. But it's just using something that's at our fingertips to leverage for you. So any questions with that? So if you have a need of, of really understanding target marketing more, get with me and I'll help you design your own campaigns. We have a few minutes. I want to get in really quick into point leveraging so that you understand that piece <coughs> of it too so that when you're in a role plays, you got a better understanding of what now target marketing is. What is point leveraging? Because there's a whole series of different things we can talk about on that that we'll get into also. Oops. Do you still need this? No. No, yeah, could you just roll it up? Just flip the lights on. Let's get into point leveraging. Because point leveraging becomes a very, look, here's something that's going to set you apart every agent out there that if you start using these techniques and strategies I borrowed this from the believe it or not the car world so I used to own my own dealership uh, small wasn't this huge Larry Miller type stuff but I used it and how I got paid was on the back end if I arranged the financing I would get sometimes two three four percent on the back side of that auto loan because here's what here's what they ask what do you want your loan to be Oh, I don't want it any more than uh, $350 a month. Great. Here's what you can buy. You don't know they're about a point, point and a half on the backside still. In fact, they want to arrange the financing because that's how they make their money. And it comes in series. So once you refinance out of your loan, they lose their spiff. And it's typically between $100, $200 a month that you're paying. It's crazy. So what I did is I figured out how can I leverage this into the real estate world? And this was probably 20, 20 years ago that I actually started using this. And it was interesting because there is a whole different way of using uh, uh, point leveraging that we need to discuss. And I only gonna be able to get into a part of it today. But let's just keep numbers that make it simple so we don't have to break out um, a calculator, okay? What is the number one thing a consumer wants to know? Payment. Payment. Pay right? What am I paying a month? So this is again where I started realizing that I need to develop a program that will actually allow me to capitalize on the back end. Here's what eight, uh, LOs used to do years ago until TRID and some of these things come into play after the real estate crash, is that they would pat the back end sometimes up to 10%. Shocking. Who's my lenders in here? Any lenders? I used to. So you used to do lending. So, so you probably understand. And you used to do lending. So, you know, point leveraging is only based on secondary market. So let's just say that you know, and, it's, it, and I, what I'll always say, it doesn't always work, but a lot of the time it does. So what's the first thing you get when you get an offer coming in that you better get? Letter, letter, prequel, right? We understand who they are, so that's here. So let's just suppose, what do you see with the properties probably 400 or under, and even sometimes I've had them up into a million. 
Closing costs. Points. Right? They're there. They're, it's something we have to deal with. So that translates here to being what? $6,000. So really, this offer isn't a $200,000 offer. It's a what? 194, right? That's really what the offer is. So this is kind of what it sounds like and looks like as I call up a lender. So Michael, hey, I've got Mr. and Mrs. Smith here. They sound like a great buyer. I'm really excited about their agent, really excited about them as a buyer. And I'm just calling to see if they qualify for buying this property. Does everything look good? Yes. Okay, so their credit's good, their down payment's good, job, verification of deposits, verification of employment, all that's looking really good. Awesome. I'm really excited to be working with these people because here's the thing. We really don't have enough room into this contract to actually make this work by paying points. And I was wondering what your ideas about leveraging or getting them the closing costs we can have because I really want to make it work. What's he going to say inevitably most of the time? Praise the price. price. What's the problem? Appraisal, because we're at the top of the market right now. We're actually an inclining market. We can sell a home more than it's really worth right now. We're having a real problem with appraisals. I'm going to talk to Michael about that. I'm going to say, Michael, you know, I totally understand that. That scares me because we're at the top of our market. Not only that, they're paying more. So we might have an appraisal problem. And when we do, what's the first thing that goes away? That. Bill's dead. Bill is dead. Here's the other problem. Why would you actually pin your buyer down on a 30-year $18,000 proposition. Why would you do that? So let me ask you, Michael, wouldn't it make more sense if we are at 2.875 prime right now, percent, why wouldn't we go ahead and bump this rate to say what, 3.275 percent? Cover the closing costs in the secondary market. Here's the beauty. Six months to a year, Michael, you get to refinance them. Okay, so they're going to pay maybe six, maybe 12 payments, but once they refinance it, this goes away. Gone. Completely out of here. They get, so if you're, if you're, if you're refinancing a home at 206,000 or 200,000, what's going to have a better payment? 200. Help me understand why you wouldn't want to put control back into the consumer's pocket. I do this for myself when I buy. I'm going to leverage it at the secondary market to pay my down payment or closing costs or whatever I can pay with point leveraging so that I can keep my money in my pocket. Because if they're going to pay it and then I can refinance it another time, then I can completely get rid of it. And you may use the argument, well, what if they never go up? Or what if they never go down? Look, would you rather have some control or no control? And it really comes down to that. How do you want for yourself? It's better for the consumer to leverage that way because they take control. Where's the 18000 coming from? 30-year mortgage. Three times the amount. Over time. Yeah. Oh, that's time factoring of money, right? Okay. Yeah, eighteen grand. Because look, this is set in stone. Unless grandma comes along, gives you six grand, you're paying it. $18,000. Right? So here's the other thing that's really good. So we know anything under about 400 right now, are you competing? And if your buyer really needs closing costs, doesn't it make sense to go in qualifying them right here so that you're a stronger buyer? Yes. Because again, tie the property down. That's what you want to do. Create that. So here's another thing I want to go over real quick. So point leverage, and there's so many other different ways I want to go through this and I want to teach you guys on. But let's just say that you put an offer in, and well, let's say you're looking at properties and you get this crack going on. That's a 2 percenter. That's a 2.5 percent. Here's a uh, 1.5 percent and you can't get the dummies to really even move off that. How do you make yourself whole? 
and they don't even know it. Any ideas? Are you talking about the BAC on it? BAC. <coughs> so let me ask you, what does state and federal regulations say we have to have with every buyer? Buyer broker. Buyer broker. Buyer broker. What does that buyer broker say? 3% plus maybe 595, 695, whatever yours may be. And you get other companies because they weak ass agents not knowing how to leverage their abilities. I shouldn't say that, this is being recorded. <laughs> so my point, I forgot it was being recorded. You Sorry people. So yeah, I wasn't, yeah, I didn't say any names, did I? Yeah. So here's the deal. I'm going to switch hats now because I'm going to switch hats depending on who I'm representing. So they don't want to go in, but the ding dongs will actually go. So my next question, if they say, no, we're not paying any more, because you can go in and you can use the verbiage. Look, my buyer is asking the seller to pay the difference in commission that I'm obligated to buy or pay when I do this. Will they pay? Nope, we're not doing it. Great, will they pay points? Yep. Really? nuts because they're willing to pay up to what three percent maybe not as much but that does not matter I'm gonna get points because let me ask you a question when this doesn't get taken care of in the obligation what's the remainder what is it is it contractually bound to the buyer yeah. yes go like this okay. <coughs> so what is the leftover closing, cost. closing costs is it a cost yep. yes is it in the closing? Yes. Does our affiliated lending company know how to do this? Phil is a master at it. Phil, because okay. that's such a great question. Because here's what's interesting. Lending will go, oh yeah, I know how to do that. Then they leave it off their disclosures. Now you've got a problem. Because even if you're going in and you're qualifying them here, or here, or you're going in here and saying, Hey, Phil, guess what? I'm only getting 2% BAC on this, so I'm going to capitalize at a 0.5% uh, in to the closing plus 595 to pay my closing costs. And I'm going <coughs> to extract that, leave the remainder to the buyer. He's still getting a value from me doing that, but I'm negotiating my closing cost into that point leveraging. So you're made whole. So I have the situation, but the contract fell through. What I'm going to say is, where do you put that? Where do you write this stuff down to tell the lender? Where does he write that? You, you okay, screen? great, great question. Thanks for asking. The reality is, is this why you got to use my lender? Folks, if you want me to get you closing costs and make this happen, you need to go with my lender. You know how difficult it is to actually call in a phone in somebody that's in Wisconsin? who's originating a, phone for, a, a loan for you saying, hey, I need you to put a half a point on the, on the lending side for closing costs for this. What? What's it called, actually? When you said this, what do you call it? Point leveraging. My, my notes to the lender. Oh, the, the lender? Yeah. The lender's just closing cost. It's absolutely a closing cost. But it's, the, the closing cost goes to us, so it's got to be named. Well, yeah, he's going to put it in there. Look, a, a commission. Yield spread or buying points? Points. It's coming out of the points. Because look, what does it say? I'm going to use this points for on behalf of the closing cost, right? So that is a closing cost. That's going to be line item on that. Absolutely, it's going to be line item. That's why the lender has to understand what you're doing. Phil never questions. Phil, I need a half percent. Okay, great. Phil, I need a percent. Okay, great. The closing disclosures, it's done. Now it's perfectly legal. Something you can apply in and you're made whole. You don't need to turn in that one form for the BAC be different. Tell me why you'd need to do that. I'm hoping you don't. You don't. <laughs> why? But this is such a great question. Why don't you need to do it? You, you already have a contract. It. You're negotiating. Your closing costs are already agreed to. There you go. And so you already have that in your deal. You already have so this. They've, they've signed, the right? Just part of the deal. They agreed. Because here's the question to the buyer. Oh, okay. Do you want to pay for it? Or you want to come out of your closing costs that the seller's paying for it? But you better tell the lender that up front. Lender, lender better know that. That's part of your strategy. It's how you walk through your market. 
That is something that's going to make you whole. Because that, look, your, your 595 or whatever it is should never be a problem. Because you're going to negotiate it in closing costs. So he needs to lock that knowing that. He needs to do that. To so when you're saying, look, I'm going to take Wayne to you as a lender, you better make sure Wayne is actually file is dedicating the potential of this happening. Because I don't know at this point, is it a half a percent? Is it one percent? What is it? Is it the 595, 695? Now, you'll get yourself in trouble if you go crazy with that. So keep it within standards of what we see. So it's leveraging. But point leveraging can change the way you do business. Make more money. Why aren't you financing your business through point leveraging? That's a question I have. Crap. You can qual Here's the crazy thing. With this right now, are you kidding me? 2.875, you can still pay points and still outperform the market. Period. You guys got to take this good news and you got to put it out to your people. Start using this and leverage into your business. If you do, you'll be shocked in what it does at the end of the year. So one other thing I'm going to give leave with you on uh, VA. That's, you guys should be VA experts after this. <coughs> so do you realize that in a VA loan, you can ask, ask up to 6% in closing costs from the seller? If you do that, you can pay off consumer debt. It's one of the only loans you can do that with. So my nephew came from the Air Force from Hawaii, and he says, I can't buy yet. He says, I've got to pay off a Jeep and a credit card. From the move from Hawaii, it's quite expensive. So I said, so if I had a plan to actually get that debt for you, would you buy right now? He says, heck yeah. So great, I asked for 6% in closing costs on a property that was getting ready to reduce. So I'll give you full price, but I need 6% back in closing costs. You can't do that. Sure you can. Does it have to appraise for the base price plus 6%? Absolutely, because here's what they were doing. They were coming down because they're in a stressful situation, had to sell as a divorce deal. They came down from 550, we're going down to 499. I give them 499. Got six percent in closing cost. Paid off the Jeep. Paid off the credit card. Appraised for 550. His Jeep now is free. His credit card is wiped out. Do you think I look like a hero? Okay. Hell yes. He's 50 grand to the better right now, and he's got equity equity value in his home. His Jeep's paid off. His credit card's wiped out. His DTI comes into a line much better, which allowed him to afford more home. Because your LO can actually go in and qualify them for more if they can see the picture of here's where we're at. So that 12,000 on the Jeep, and I think it was like 10,000 on the card, wiped out, DTI came into alignment to buy at 499. The house is worth now 650. So does the escrow just pay it off? Yeah, escrow. yeah, because see the money's coming out of the seller who not actually needed to sell. It's a little bit tougher in this market because things are selling so fast. But in that market and what his eligibility was, was it worked perfectly because I found a property that was actually going to reduce instead of reducing. Why not give me that? And we can make this deal work. You can't do that. Well, why don't you take a, a shot and see if I can? Now that agent is a big believer. So those are the things you can do to actually apply to your business and target marketing or point leveraging. Any questions? It's actually so good to be educated on this because if there's listings out there and they're at 2.5 and they're only offering a discount and you kind of shy away from that, at least you know that if you have a lender that will support this, then you don't have to, it's kind of right. doing a disservice to your clients not wanting to show those properties because they're at 2.5, but having the strategy mm -hmm. and having a lender to back it up, you don't have to. I do never that. shy away from those properties because I know what I can do with it. Yeah. But I need a lender that's going to write that with me and understand how to do it. Who is Phil with? Sinspiro downstairs. Absolutely but understand. But if you're also working with a seller that has a lender of their own or if your buyer's using a lender, then at least if you know the strategy, you know it works and you can work there you with, go. Their, work with their, your buyer's lender to get this going. Makes sense. Yeah. You disclose to the buyer that his um, monthly payment is going to be slightly higher? Why would I? He knows already with the lender. It's not your job. That is not your job. Let the lender and the buyer determine what the payment's going to be. Never insert an objection when it's not an objection. So I have one right now that's 2.5%. It's mm -hmm. already in our contract. 
for the due diligence period, my lender, can I still do this? Probably not, if you're this far along. Something you need to set up. Okay? Like how soon do you have to have it set up in the very beginning? In the beginning. My strategy is when I go into this, I know that's my strategy. If I have to do it and I'll apply it before I write the offer. I know how I'm going to structure the offer based on what I'm receiving, right? Probably there you go. That's it. Yes. What do you say? The lender needs to be on board based on what rates are doing. Look, the back side may kill this for you. So it means your DTI might go out of whack. So you might not be able to do it. Then you're only stuck with trying to bump the price. <coughs> so it doesn't always work, but most of the time it will. We're out of time, guys. Thanks for being here. I hope it worked for you. Thank you.